So happy new year once again. Is it seem to you as a new year? How have you uh, begun your new year? With uh, excitement? With the problems? With the party? Drinking? What are you expect to see happening this year? What do you hope for this year? What was your resolution? Have you ever set your resolution? What I want this year? You know, there was a story about uh, Paul Turner who took his friend out to a farm and his friend suggested to him that they should go out and pick some mushrooms. So Tonya thought, oh well, it's going to take some time. But to his astonishment, his friend constantly keeping bending down and picking, bending down and picking, and within 10 minutes, the basket was full. To turn here, he looked around, and there were mushrooms all around, but he could not see. He only saw full of grass. So it dawned on him that how true it is people see only what they are trained to see, what they are prepared to see, what they are hoping to see. You see, his friend was the son of a food inspector. He's trained to see those mushrooms in the field. That's a similar question that our God is asking us the first Sunday of this new, brand new year, how do you see? What do you see? What are you prepared to see through this prophet Hagan? Did you know that there is a, a little book in the Bible called Hagan? I mean, if you're not careful, it's only two chapters and you're going to miss it. And we don't study about Haggai that often. But through Haggai, God is uh, asking Israelites to rebuild the temple and he's promising them when they rebuild the temple, God's temple, house, that the glory of the present house will be greater than what? The former one. What is the former one? The temple that they built in the greatest wealth and health and strength and power during the time of Solomon, right? So how can it be possible to rebuild that temple with people who just came back from exile. And they have less people, less power, less strength. How can it be the greater glory in the present house than the former one? And God says what? Well, it is possible, right? Nothing is impossible with God. And he says in the verse 4, be strong, Almighty God said, right? And then uh, later on, work. Be strong, dun, 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 work. Because what? I am with you. I am with you. So, be strong in what? <coughs> Faith, yeah? Faith, be strong and work. Faith without work is dead. We talked about it last year. We're going to continue this year. And we want our faith to be alive faith instead of dead faith. Don't you? 
If we are going to have any glory this year, we've got to exercise our faith. It all depends on what we do with our faith and how we see. In verse 3, Haggai, the, through Haggai, God asks us, how does it look to you now? He's not asking past, right, about past. How does it look to you now? What are you prepared to see now in the future? If this is the greatest passage that we can have the first Sunday of the year, is that he is promising not only rebuilding the house, but whatever got ruined in our lives, our relationships, our finances, whatever put in the back corner, God asked us to rebuild it, restore it. Your spirit, whatsoever, rebuild it, be strong, and work, because I am with you. And when you rebuild, when we rebuild our life, our finances, our relationships, our buildings, etc., God promised what? The glory of the present will be greater than the former one. We sang this morning, greater things yet to come. Amen? So what must we do? We've got, we say this morning, we've got to do three M's, M and M's. M and M's, yeah? M and M's, M's. How's that? Three M's. I was going to do, do, do only two, but anyway. So, three M's. And marching, we got, we've got to be marching, and uh, we've got to be moving, and we've got to be maturing. That's what we said this morning, right? Yeah? We are marching in the will of God. That's the first point. Marching in the will of God. In order for us to maximize His presence, in order for us to claim His uh, promise that the present, glory of the present house will be greater than the former one. Whatever God has blessed you, this year is going to be greater if we rebuild our strength, rely on God's power. So, we've got to, in order for us to do that, we've got to march in the will of God. And what is the will of God? Take this all out. So, you, you've got the answer. What is the will of God? How do we know what is the will of God? By study, the word of God is will of God, isn't it? Study and pray and what? Obey, Obey and worshiping. How the how do you know? Praise God and anything, everything, right? And you see, um, you know, what is will of God? Everybody can kind of stunned. But you see, in the Bible, it's general will of God for God's people is what? Written in the Bible. And we can pick Ten Commandments, right? And uh, the, the Great Commission, Great Commandments. I mean, simply, but how do we know the specific will of God for specific purpose or specific problems, specific issues? How do I know will of God for my, the will of God for me? How do we know? Spend time with Him, right? It's a, it's a pray to God. And some people think that prayer is just one-way conversation. One way is not even conversation, right? Conversation means a two-way dialogue, right? And we say, we want this, we want that, we wish this, we want, we want that, and then, we don't give God a time to say, to respond to our request. We just leave. In terms of uh, 
uh, uh, hearing, listening, car's voice, we are act like uh, we are ADD, attention deficit. <laughs> and then we never mind that God, Jesus told us to pray God's will be done, right? And when God's will be done, it is much, 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 much better than our will be done. But often we say my will be done. You know, when we are lacking, spending time with God, studying the Word of God, and meditating and worshiping and praising, etc., we become distant with God. We cannot hear God clearly. We cannot see God clearly, what God is telling us. And nowadays, I, I see, I learn a lot of lessons from watching how PK does. I mean, she's a, that's my doggy. She's a, a legally blind and deaf, and she cannot see very well and hear very well. And stress me out when I take her out for work, and she used to be very obedient, right? She could hear me clearly and see me clearly, so she was very obedient and walked straight. You know, she knows where Mama wants to take her, but now she's zigzagging in front of me because she cannot see, so she's following the smell, right? And she <laughs> follows the smell of somebody, somebody else's, some dog, some poop. So what do I want to do? I would uh, guide her, hey, don't go that way, you know? And she fights with me, her legs, you know, she fights with me. She, she thinks that is the way she's got to go. And she cannot see here, but she thinks she knows better. She's in charge, she want to leave mama. So it just stressed me out, and sometimes I let her fall. You know, she's pulling so hard, and if I let go of her leash, she <laughs> So she can learn, yeah? And mama got this, uh, mama's will is what? Providing her good life for the rest of her life, right? I try to give her the best. I have a plans, my will, my wishes, everything a clear path. But yet, she cannot see or hear my commands very well and hear the voice she doesn't know where it's coming, so she get all lost in the world. And I look at her, I says, well, how many times have I done that to my Lord? Because I'm caught up with my busyness, my phone's ringing, and taking care of issues, etc. And sometimes, a lot of times, I think I know better. I try to pull him into my direction. What is your will for your children? You all can say, well, I want them to do good. I want them to be best. I want to raise them. I want them to be successful. I want them to live life, good life, abundant life, headache-free life. We are evil, and yet we know, yet we wish, we will. Our will is good things for them, how much more our God wants us to live clear path, live life that He created us to be, a worthy life, worthy of being God's children. In order for us to do that, in order for us to do that, we even got to seek His face. John always uh, quoted that passage. Second Chronicles 7.14, right? She says, My people who are called by my name, what? If 
my people and pray, seek my face, Amen. I will heal, heal their land. God's going to bless sets off if we humble ourselves, seek his face, and we pray. And because, you know, when we pray, we think we pray to ask God to do this, to do that. But in the end, what's going to be? When we pray, we humble ourselves. We have our desires and wishes and wantings and our will, but we keep on praying that we get to know what? His will. If we don't leave right away, if we engage in two-way conversation, then we get to know the will of God. That's when we are going to rebuild anything, anybody, anything, everything this year gonna be greater than the former one because God is with us. So we've got to be marching in the will of God to enjoy His blessing. Amen? Amen. And the second one was what? We are moving in the plans of God. We are moving. We, I cannot even sing. We are moving. We are moving in the plans of God. You know the a church choir. Uh, they um, decided to have a car wash to raise funds for their retreat. And in the morning it went so well, but in the afternoon, downpouring, so the business got stuck. And they were doomed and unhappy and dismayed, and money still needs to be raised. And all was sitting down, and one lady picked up the, a big piece of uh, cardboard and wrote, We wash. And then pointing arrow upward, he rinses, rinses. And soon all Christians stopped to wash their cars and went off in the rain so that God can rinse them. You see, Proverbs 19:21 says, man makes plans, but eventually what? God's purpose will prevail. Their purpose was raising money, but God's purpose was what? Lifting His name high. In anything, everything we do. What are you? What is your plan for this year? You know, some of us don't have a problem at all going, living life without any plans. Have you seen people like that? They are free spirit. That's good. They go along with anything happen in life. And they don't mind like uh, spontaneous activities. They love to do it. That's fine. And when God says you've got to do this, they have no problem. Because they didn't have a plan, so they have no problem. And also they have a freedom to choose yes or no. But some of us have a problem when our plans got interrupted, messed up. We like to schedule things. We like to live orderly life. And we like to know what's going to happen in beforehand. Don't throw me things, you know, spontaneous things. Don't throw me things to be changed at last minute. You know, those of us who have a problem, we've got to listen carefully. Those of us who don't have a plans got 
to listen carefully. You, you see, when our plans uh, get interrupted, that means God wants to have our attention. And we better be moving into the God's plan. We better be cooperating with God. You see, God's plan is much better, higher than ours, always, right? God has plans for us to prosper and give us a hope and future, right? That we know that much, right? And his plans are much better. And think about Joseph, Mary and Joseph. If they are if married the way they planned, then we wouldn't be talking about them at all 2,000 years later, right? God messed up their plans, and they obeyed. <coughs> and now we're still talking about them trying to learn from their obedience, right? And we were studying what's more called multi-focus building 20 years ago, 8,000 square feet. You know, that was our forefathers' vision and our Pokerians' vision 20 years ago. But somehow it got all sorts of problems we encountered, all sorts of problems, and all sorts of issues. 20 years later, we're still talking about it. Perhaps God wants us to cooperate with Him, revise. We still need to pray. Each step we take, what is your plan for us? How big you want us to build? How small you want us to build? What do you want? We still have to pray about our next step. So we've got to this year, if we want to enjoy His presence, if we want to enjoy the greater, greater glory in this rebuilding, we've got to seek and move into His plans for us. Amen? And then the last one is what? Maturing, we are maturing, maturing, maturing in the faith of God, in the love of God. You know, maturing for Christians, what do we need to do? It's a no-brainer, right? Our kids um, are here, they will say, study the Word of God. I'm praying and meditating and praising God and, and what else? Working, serving. Maturing, it's all it takes maturing the faith of God. Our God is faithful. And if you study the Bible, do you know? Is there a Bible anywhere that commands us to celebrate Christmas? Anybody? Can you call it? I mean, we just celebrate Christmas. Every year we celebrate Christmas. And we do a great uh, ex uh, extent to make it a very memorable Christmas. Every year we have uh, spent uh, four uh, Sundays of Advent and all that. That's good. But Bible never command us, God never command us to celebrate Christmas. Did you know that? Jesus never ever asked us, well, you must celebrate my birthday every year. Did he? No. What did he command? He commanded us to do what? Communion. Every time we gather together, eat and why? Eat and drink. Why? Communion is representing faith of God, love of God, the grace of God. And when we join in communion, that means that we are not just doing things together, just coming and that's one thing. It is statement of our faith and statement of our God's faith in us. God is faithful to us. 
as we are faithful to God. So when we come to communion, that we look back the life that we led, and we look forward and receiving His uh, blessing. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us and renew us so that we can live a life worthy of His sacrifice, His love and grace. That's why we do not ever want to move this communion table. I always insist to stay here. It's a, when you walk in, that's a statement of God's love and grace. His faithfulness continually washing us, continually molding us, continually. Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 8 says what? I am confident that nothing, no death, no life, no nothing, no hungry, no, not a hungry, not bully, or no nothing going to separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. And, and he says, uh, verse 31, if God is for us, if God is such faithful to us, who can be against us? Do you have such confidence? Do you see yourself as a dearly, dearly loved by God? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself person who cannot be changed? Some people make a com comments like, well, I'm just born to be that way. People, when do, they do not grasp what the love of God, what the faith of God is all about, then they make such a statement, they see themselves as failures. Our God continually loving us. It doesn't matter what we've done, what we are right now doing, in spite of His love, His grace, in spite of His death and resurrection, we are walking in darkness. God is faithful whenever we return, whenever we ask for forgiveness, He will grant us. That's the life. That's the way our God is. So when we maximize His presence with us, when we claim His promise to us, He is with us. And that whatever in life we are rebuilding, it doesn't matter if your relationship, finances, your house, this temple, when we are strong in faith, and work, faith in action, then God has promised glory of the present life, present house will be greater than former one. Amen? Amen. So it all depends on what? What do you see? what you do with your faith. How do you see, prepared, trained to see it's coming this year, happening this year? Much, much blessings or much, much troubles? What do you see? How do you make up your mind? What you gonna do with your faith? What So if we want to have a great, amazing year, what should we be doing this year? 